say who played where, who that right there? Big Sean. <laughs> Who's this? Pablo. <laughs> Good evening. This is the North Carolina Central press conference after their 58-56 win over Savannah State. Coach Moten, uh, you can introduce the, the trio at the table <laughs> and opening comment from you, sir. Uh, to my right, uh, Senior Pablo Rivas to my left, um, second team all me at Rashawn Davis, and to my immediate left, um, honorary assistant coach Lavelle Moten Jr. Um, you know, I just told the guys in the locker room, this tournament is about trust, trusting your coaching staff, trusting your teammate, just trust. Uh, we put in a game plan and we thought you know, we could execute. Obviously, they want to score 100 points, and that's not our type of game. We don't have the firepower to do that. We put in a game plan, and we wanted to control tempo, and that was the key. And I told them, we have to make layups because the most underrated factor about that team is when you miss layups, they go to the other end and make a three each and every time. I thought we were tight early. Um, our press break was horrific, um, and I thought that was some guys running from the ball, honestly, because they didn't want to be in that situation. Raekwon Harney, when he came in the game, he settled us down. Uh, he's a senior. He has some mature um, instincts about himself. And, you know, he calmed everyone down. And then down the stretch, these two guys beside me, they just made plays. It wasn't coaching. It was this guy and that guy just making plays. It's nothing I drew up. It was these two guys making plays, and they're going to have to make plays for the duration of this tournament. Comment? Questions for coach and or players. After the shake, uh, Luke Williams from Black House Sports State, after the shake you first had, what were you saying at halftime? What did you, uh, what did you say? No, I thought we were good. I just thought we needed to settle down. With all that said, I think it was a four point game at the half. Um, and they were shooting 29% uh, and 22% from the three point line. And they only had 34 points. So we thought if we could limit the amount of times they shoot it, we could prevent them from going on runs because three threes is, is what break your back against them. And they'll do that in a minute plus. And we had to remain disciplined throughout because they'll press you and try to speed you up and bait you into these two-on-one situations for you to play their game. And that's not our game. And we understood who we were. And uh, we didn't attack it the way we needed to in the first half. I thought in the second half we finished um, some key stretches down the point. Uh, for Rashawn Davis, big game for you inside. What was it like battling today? Um, <clears throat> um, I just tried to do whatever um, my team needed me to do to get the W. It's not really about me or individual stats. As long as we get the W, you know, that's all that matters. Stephen Gaither, HBCU game day. Pablo, uh, you were last year, uh, part of the team that won the championship, uh, played a bigger role this year. What's what's the difference in your role between this year and last year? Um, the difference is that this year I have to be the bigger brother because it's a whole new team. So um, some of these guys never been in this situation before. So therefore, like for me, I had to step up, you know, twice bigger than, than you know, everybody else. And uh, for me, like, it's, it's bigger than me and it's bigger than us. So it's like, we have to get this. We have to get this win. Um, um, Coach, a question for you and your players. The last time you met Savannah State, um, you made a big second half comeback. This time around, you were able to get ahead and grab the win. Uh, what were the Eagles able to do differently in this game? Savannah, um, you know, up there at home, they're really difficult to play against. They shoot the basketball extremely well in their home venue, and. Um, we knew that. Even at their place, we thought we had some a great game plan. It was close going into the half. The first four minutes of the second half, they kind of got away from us a bit. After the game, I told our guys, it's OK, because we're going to see this team again. And it's one thing to look at their style on tape. Um, and it's so difficult to simulate in practice. 
they're kind of like a, a, a very, very pretty girl that you see on TV, but when you see in person, you're really stunned, right? And that's how, that's how they are. And we've seen her before, two weeks ago, and that was the best thing to happen to us because we got an understanding of their tempo and their speed. So we wasn't in shock or in awe of their speed. It was just a matter of us executing now. And I don't know if they scored 56 points the entire year. Like, it's, it's an incredible job by these guys defending because they were going to be out there on the island by themselves. And we said, look, no open threes. And if they shoot one, it got to be contested from 25 feet. And if they make it, don't drop your head because they're going to make something that says, oh, my. But you just keep fighting. You just keep fighting. And you keep fighting. And good things will happen. Of course, how do you think your freshman helped us? <laughs> man, they're driving me absolutely. I just told these two, man, them, them kids drive me crazy. Uh, I told my AD, she don't pay me enough because my, my cholesterol levels, I, I know they're out of control right now. I'm green. Um, I feel like I'm going to be 55 years old on my next birthday. They, they're driving me crazy, man. But, you know, it's fun. We'll look back at this hopefully and smile one day because right now we survived and we advanced. And they're good enough. They just have to play with some confidence. And this is foreign territory to them. It's not a high school gym. This is, this is for all the marbles. And I just told them, just relax. Put the pressure on me. Just relax. You can go out here and have fun and, and just relax and play <coughs> Carolina Central basketball. So they'll be fine. Reggie hit a huge three. Coach, what is the difference between last year you guys were the number one season and this year you coming in, yeah. you know, not the number one season? What's the mindset difference that you guys have and able to advance this year? We have, a, we have a quote on our locker room wall that say the standard is the standard. So regardless of the teams, we, we're coming in here to win a championship. Anything less, we're going to be disappointed regardless of the seeding. Um, last year, obviously, we, we, we had some experience and some senior lady uh, basketball players who've been there and done that. This, this year, I think we're the most inexperienced basketball team in the country in terms of starts. At the end of the day, when they throw the ball out there, none of that matters. Um, I'm sure the other 12 teams in this league don't care nothing about North Carolina Central's problems. If anything, they're glad we have them, and we understand that. So now, as I told these two guys beside me when we're walking down the hallway, we're going to go as you go. I, these two combined for 32 rebounds tonight and 35 points. And I'm not saying they got to go get 35 and 32, but just their leadership and their temperament and their demeanor um, have, to, have to be a spirited effort so it can lead those freshmen and calm them down because we can't rely on those freshmen to do things that they've never done before. Coach, you got uh, Morgan coming up next. You guys blew them out of the water in, in Durham, but obviously uh, expecting a, a little bit of a different game mm -hmm. on, uh, on tomorrow night. Just talk about uh, you know, what you expect facing against Todd Golden's guys. Man, Todd is he's one of the best. I don't care what happens in the regular season. When it comes this time, that, that team takes on its personality. And it's, it's going to be Ali Frazier tomorrow with a basketball out there. Um, and that's what it's going to be. We got two coaches who are pretty intense guys and two teams that's going to be pretty intense. I thought they had two player of the year candidates in Philip Carr and Kenley. Um, I love watching those kids play when they're not playing against me. Um, you know, And I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of respect for Todd and what he's done. And, you know, it's, it's, it's down to the final four as of tomorrow. So we don't expect what happened in Durham because we're a different team in Durham, right? So this is not going to be Durham. We have our fans. Uh, but it's going to be a scrappy ball game because no one wants to go home. It's, it's no tomorrow at the end of this. And our guys understand that. And we're going to try to go back and look at some film and review a little bit and get rested because we know we got our hands full. Any other questions? Uh, Pablo, uh, you're from Panama. Did you hear from Beza, also from Panama as well? What's it like going up against somebody from your home country? <laughs> I mean, he beat me for two years straight. So, you know, like, me, like, and the team getting this W, it, it felt amazing because, like, our, our, family, our family talks like, oh, yeah, he on you, you know, he, he run, he's a big cousin and stuff like that. But tonight kind of proved that I'm the big cousin. So it, it, felt, it felt good. It felt good to beat them. Coach, uh, is Rashawn a uh, unguardable player when he's uh, when he's uh, has, has the has the role that he's uh, that you want him to play? Uh, uh, Sean, oh, I'm probably not Sean's uh, favorite coach all the time. 
because I see so much potential in this young man. We're asking him to do something that he's never done in his life. And we demand responsibility and accountability from him every single day. And he's not accustomed to that. But he's, be he's beginning to become accustomed to it. And physically, God spent a little more time on him, right? He's 6'9", he has soft hands. It's rare that you see him drop a pass. He, he's a very, very talented guy. In the likes of the Kyle O'Quinns and the big guys that we've, Kevin Thompson's that we've seen in the media. But it's the other things. It's the spirit, it's the fight. And that's what I'm trying to get him to do every single day. And once he understands that, then the sky's the, what Michael Jordan say, the ceiling is the roof for him. The ceiling is the roof for him. Um, but tonight was a great effort on his behalf. And we're gonna need that spirited effort, regardless of his point total. We're gonna need that spirited effort. You know, he was above the square sometimes grabbing rebounds and that's winning basketball. You know, and that's what we're asking him to do, be a winner. All the other stuff will take care of itself. Rashawn, can you just follow up on what Coach said about that tough love and how he's been on your back? trying to get you to perform at a high level? Uh, you know, sometimes it's rough, but, you know, I know at the end of the day not to take it personal because it's all really going to benefit me at the end of the day if I want to play at the next level. So, I mean, it's tough love, but I just got to handle it. <clears throat> just take it and just deal with it and just get better every day. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.